Leave Ukraine. That's the message our State Department is sending to Americans, any American living in Ukraine. President Biden is also considering deploying United States forces to Eastern Europe to deter a possible Russian invasion. Well, the president continues the high stakes game of diplomacy. Meanwhile, the United States is helping to shore up Ukraine's defenses in case the talks fail. CBN's Brody Carter brings us the latest on this escalating crisis. With growing fears that a Russian invasion is imminent, the U.S. State Department is telling the families of U.S. diplomats in Ukraine to leave the country. This is the Biden administration ways sending U.S. forces to our NATO allies in the region. If a single additional Russian force goes into Ukraine uh, in an aggressive way, uh, as I said, that would trigger uh, a swift, a severe, and a united response uh, from us. More than 100,000 Russian troops are believed to be along the Ukraine-Russia border, including to its neighbor to the north, Belarus. The British government now claiming it has intelligence that Russia is plotting to install a pro-Russian leader in Ukraine. The U.K. says several former Ukrainian politicians have been recruited for the measure. Russia calls it nonsense and disinformation. It is certainly possible that uh, the diplomacy that Russia is engaged in uh, is simply going through the motions and it won't affect their ultimate decision about whether to invade or in some other way intervene or not in Ukraine. As diplomatic talks continue, another shipment of U.S. military aid arrived in Ukraine including 90 tons of ammunition and anti-tank missiles. NATO countries are also sending military aid. Sunday, lawmakers pushing for stronger sanctions and military aid to deter Putin. We need to be very aggressive in pushing back against President Putin, whether that's in the form of uh, sanctions, as well as continuing to equip our Ukrainian friends uh, with not only defensive capabilities, but also offensive weapons. Representative Mike McCall, the top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee warns that the world is watching the U.S. reaction. This is not just about Ukraine. It's about China. It's about President Xi in, in Taiwan. It's about the Ayatollah and the bomb. It's about North Korea that just fired off two missiles. Over the weekend, White House officials said President Biden might send several thousand U.S. troops in addition to warships and aircraft to NATO allies in Eastern Europe. The latest Trafalgar poll shows nearly 85 percent of Americans believe America should have a limited involvement if Russia invades Ukraine. Brody Carter, CBN News. Well, CBN's George Thomas has been to Ukraine and Russia, and he joins us now for his eyewitness account. So, George, weigh in on the U.K. intelligence report. Uh, do, do you think and do your contacts think that this is likely? Yeah, speaking to my contacts over the weekend, both in Kiev as well as in Ma as well as in Moscow, uh, this is a, a very unlikely scenario. Uh, I mean, obviously, Russia has had these kinds of operations not just uh, around its neighboring countries, but all over the world, where it seeks to uh, destabilize, influence governments and policies vis-a-vis -vis its own uh, policies in 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 Moscow. But uh, you know, remember the last time that uh, Moscow tried to have a Putin man in Kiev in. In the, in the way of Viktor Yanukovych, uh, he was uh, duly uh, uh, overthrown uh, by the Ukrainians. And so, uh, sure, you, uh, Russia has for years tried to influence, continues to influence Ukraine. It's a major, major country uh, to its, uh, to, within its orbit uh, and has been trying to influence that country so far uh, with not a lot of um, uh, uh, you know, positive reaction. Uh, but the idea of trying to overthrow the country uh, short of a complete occupation uh, is, not, is not possible. All right, well, let's talk about rallying the international community. It, it, uh, you would think the uh, current administration would be able to do that. This is obvious aggression against a sovereign nation. Why can't we put together an international coalition like we did against Saddam Hussein? So uh, it, it seems we can't even keep NATO. Uh, yesterday, Germany cautioned about the impact of sanctions. Uh, we can't seem to form an international coalition against this. Yeah, uh, partly because uh, Ukraine is not a member of, uh, of NATO, even though they made this written deal 30 plus years ago that the United States, uh, Great Britain uh, and Russia, in essence, signed an agreement saying that if U Ukraine would hand over its massive uh, nuclear weapon stockpile, that the United States, along with NATO, would come to its rescue in any, uh, you know, military invasion or 
uh, incursion into the country. What we saw back in 2014 when the Russians uh, walked into Luhansk as well as into Don, in the Donbass region, the United States uh, as well as NATO did nothing. The, the big issue here is that, and, and really President Biden uh, alluded to this last week during his press conference, uh, that NATO is not on the same page when it comes to responding uh, to Russia, primarily because Russia, the European Union, gets about 40 percent, Gordon, you know this very well, gets about 40 percent of its uh, oil and natural gas from Russia. Germany gets 50 percent of its natural gas. And so that is why uh, Germany, the German government said over the weekend, listen, let's let's cool it on the, the idea of sanctions uh, against Russia because of the pipelines that flow uh, pri from Russia primarily through through Ukraine uh, to the rest of Europe. So sanctioning the energy industry is, could be catastrophic for the for the EU. But also you have asset managers here in the United States that have uh, invested a lot of money in Russia's banking system. And there's some talk about uh, sanctioning the various banking industries and the financial markets, uh, the ability for Russia to, to operate on the financial markets. Uh, so, you know, asset managers are also concerned because of the huge investments that they have made uh, equally. Uh, is Putin just playing, a, 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 I guess, a classic chess game? The Russians are quite good at chess. Uh, and he sees all of this. He sees that the international banking community is too tightly woven together. You can't unravel it. He sees that Europe's economy is completely dependent on Russia for energy. And so is that emboldening him to act right now? Absolutely, Gordon. And you see the evidence of this back in 2004 when Russia invaded Georgia, uh, when it invaded uh, the eastern part of Ukraine and then subsequently took Crimea. So clearly they know that uh, NATO as well as the United States, there's so much in terms of the financial, uh, you know, the web that is connected with Europe as well as with Russia. But as speaking to my sources uh, in Ukraine, especially in the eastern part of the country, they said to me this weekend, and please let uh, the United States know that this is not really about sanctions. This is not about energy and about access to the financial markets. This is about freedom. And what he said to me, and this is, mind you, this is a pastor who has over the last eight years living in the Donbass region, has, along with members of his church and his children, they have been digging trenches for the last eight years in this part of eastern Ukraine, ready for any potential uh, uh, invasion, further invasion, incursion into the eastern part of the country. And he said to me this weekend, he said, George, remind the Americans that this is ultimately about freedom. Why? Because since the fall of the Soviet Union, Ukraine has blossomed. It has been a, a stability of democracy, religious freedom, economic freedom, political freedom. And right next door is uh, quite the opposite. It is ruled by an authoritarian dictator who, who, who realizes that the images he sees coming out of Ukraine, of a free democratic Ukraine, is a threat to his own uh, authoritarian regime and the Russians are yearning, he says, for the same kind of freedom that the Ukrainians enjoy. And incidentally, uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, back in J June of 2021, he sent a letter to every single member of the Russian armed forces and he said to them, he said that uh, uh, he, he saw this as Russia, uh, uh, in essence, Russia and Ukraine are not two separate nations. He sees a wall that has emerged in recent years between Russia and Ukraine between parts of the same historical and spiritual space and he says it is a common calamity and a tragedy as you know that as you know Gordon this uh, for for Russia Ukraine is is a heart a heartbeat for for the greater aspirations of uh, uh, of, of Russia all right well George thanks for the insight thanks for joining us uh, it looks like we're going to turn into uh, standing on the sidelines in this uh, Russia has absolute military authority of, over the air, and so uh, the whatever invasion or war, it'll be over fairly quickly. But then it turns into a guerrilla war. And so what's the long game for Russia here on an invasion? Do you really want to occupy Ukraine uh, with an, an armed uh, population? Uh, a lot of arms have gone into Ukraine, small arms, uh, since that invasion to take over the Crimea. Uh, they're not going to have an easy time on a long-term occupation. In other news, Omicron cases are declining in half the country, and still our health care system remains in crisis. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. 
That's right, Gordon. If you need medical care in a hospital for something other than COVID, you may have already discovered it could be hard to find depending on where you live. Even as the Omicron surge is declining, it's still undermining care for other health problems. CBN News medical reporter Lori Johnson has the story. The number of COVID-19 cases is finally falling in the United States. Omicron cases are dropping or leveling off in more than half of the country. Dr. Anthony Fauci saying the current wave could peak in February. But if the pattern follows the trend that we're seeing in other places, such as the Northeast, I believe that you will start to see a turnaround throughout the entire country. But some hospitals are still overwhelmed, like this one in Wisconsin. Nowadays, if you fall on the ice, you have a heart attack, you have a stroke, we don't have beds available for those types of incidents. All the beds are being full by COVID patients. Um, Patients are waiting in the emergency room for days. In Alabama, cases have doubled in the past week. Amid the surge, the FDA has expanded the use of remdesivir, an expensive and controversial treatment. The U.S. recorded over 18 million new cases in the last month alone, more than a quarter of the nation's total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases reported since the beginning of the pandemic. And health officials are still saying your best defense is to be vaccinated. Unvaccinated are nearly four times more, times more likely to be infected and 53 times more likely to die. That is huge numbers. But on Friday, a federal judge in Texas issued a nationwide injunction barring the government from enforcing President Biden's vaccine mandate for federal workers. The Justice Department plans to appeal the decision. And oversees more protests across Europe over vaccine mandates. But France and other governments are showing no signs of backing down. With 74,000 NHS workers facing firing because they won't get the jab and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson fighting for his political life amid a scandal called Partygate, Johnson has lifted restrictions including COVID-19 passes, mask mandates and work from home guidance. This is the end of the vaccine thing. It's going to implode now. The medical staff, nurses, porters, they won't have it. How do you justify to the rest of the population? Ireland is also dropping its COVID restrictions, saying boosters helped it weather the Omicron storm. Here at home, the demand for testing is on the rise, but delivery of at-home rapid tests has been delayed by ongoing supply chain issues caused by a combination of workers calling out sick with Omicron and bottlenecked warehouses. Lori Johnson, CBN News. All right, thank you, Lori. Well, tens of thousands of pro-life supporters packed the streets of Washington, D.C. Friday to show their support for the unborn in the annual March for Life. When COVID limited, uh, while COVID limited the number of marchers this year, organizers estimate 50,000 people turned out despite the sub-freezing temperatures. This year's march comes as pro-life leaders anticipate a Supreme Court ruling that could overturn Roe versus Wade and return the abortion issue to the states. Special guests from across the United States spoke at the rally, including actor and producer Kirk Cameron. We love God, therefore we love life. And our hope is not in the White House. It's not in Congress. Our hope is not in the people who govern us or the laws that we make in this nation. Our hope is in the power of God working in the hearts of his people. March for Life President Jeannie Mancini told the crowd she's hoping and praying this year will see historic change for life in America. And Gordon, that Supreme Court ruling expected sometime around June. And we all look forward to that. But in the meantime, let's, let's, ask, for a, let's ask God for a culture that celebrates life. When, when you ask him and you say, can we, can we love our children? Uh, can we love expectant mothers and can we create an atmosphere where we reward them and say, yes, thank you for believing in the future. Thank you for believing in the next generation. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And there's no law against that. Uh, there's no Supreme Court ruling against that. Uh, let's strive for that culture where we can love. The Bible says there's no law against that. 
So let's, let's believe that and ask him for relief. Nearly six million people have fled Venezuela in recent years, making it the second largest exodus of refugees on the planet. Only the Syrian civil war has displaced more people. Not all of these migrants are headed north for the United States. Many are taking an equally dangerous route to the south. Chuck Holton brings us this firsthand look from South America on the border of Bolivia and Chile. Migrants catch rides when they can, and failing that, walk. They're spread out among back roads leading south through Colombia, Peru, and here in Bolivia. They've left home countries like Venezuela because it's almost impossible to survive on the minimum salary of only $2 a month. Most people don't have a way to survive in Venezuela. This man and his family have already been on the road for months, but they're not headed to the United States. They're headed south to a country which enjoys the highest standard of living in all of Latin America. And they've trekked through several countries to get here. Colombia, Ecuador, Peru and Bolivia. Now we go to Chile. He's run out of money, however, so his family occupies this street corner, hoping their luck will improve. Candy, face masks, pens. We sell whatever we can to survive. The process is just to get passage, little by little, border by border. Venezuela is now the source of the world's second largest mass exodus after Syria, and it's being felt throughout the hemisphere. I'm up over 12,000 feet on the Bolivian Altiplano, and this ditch behind me is the border between Bolivia and Chile. And right now there are thousands of migrants crossing this border illegally here in broad daylight, and even more will cross at night. That's a real problem. And those soldiers you see on the Chilean side are there to try to stop the migration that's coming across this border at a rate of thousands per week. But it's very difficult because no matter how far out the soldiers post, the migrants just walk a little bit further and cross illegally anyway. That's a big problem because it's very dangerous up here at night. It gets super cold. It's very dry. And so many of these migrants are dying along the way. Local media report that nearly 30 people have died making the crossing over the last 12 months. Soldiers tell me they're here to keep that from happening, although they see their efforts as futile. The path is dangerous when they come illegally because the temperature can easily dip below zero in this sector. People come this way basically looking for an easy way in. From here, they can walk just a kilometer or so and enter without trouble. Then they come back here and are put into a camp run by the police. They fill out a form seeking asylum and then undergo a quarantine of about 14 days. These Bolivian locals feel the military only makes things worse. Down there they have to cross in water up to their waists, and some have children. What are they supposed to do? Given the choice, though, between this desert and the more deadly Darien Gap, many migrants decide to head south instead of north. They hope to find work in Chile, where they can earn more in a day than they can earn in a month in their home countries. Still, most hope this isn't permanent. My hope is that things get better in Venezuela and we can go back to our country. That's it. That's all we want. We have faith that one day it will happen. Until then, Chile will have something in common with America as they struggle to find a way to deal with tens of thousands of desperate people flooding across their borders. In the Bolivian desert, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. Well, that's a story you're not going to hear elsewhere, but the crisis in Venezuela is absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, the poverty that has descended upon that country, um, the people just can't get enough money to live, and so causing this huge migration. Uh, it's not just to our southern border, it's every single country in, in, in South America. Uh, they're all facing this crisis, and whether it's Chile, Bolivia, um, um, Brazil, uh, Colombia. Colombia is carrying the brunt of it because the refugee camps are right across its border. Um, let us pray for the government in Venezuela. Let us pray for the people there that this crisis could stop. This is a man-made crisis, and it's made because of politics. Um, that's what's going on here. There's no natural disaster behind this. It's completely because of the political system uh, that has been imported into Venezuela, uh, primarily from Cuba. And you look at it and you look at the human cost and you say, 
Uh, how could anyone still believe in that nonsense? Uh, you get into that kind of politics, you can expect widespread poverty. Donald wanted to start a new at-home business. He purchased equipment on credit totaling $25,000. The problem? He didn't tell his wife. And to make matters worse, there was, this wasn't the first time. Donald and Abby Gadsden use social media to help fellow millennials manage their marriage and family, faith, fitness, and finances. One thing they share a lot about is debt, because they've had to overcome it twice. The second time came as a surprise to Abby. I saw a document that was saved, and it was a credit card statement. So I opened it up, and it was several thousand dollars. Um, it turns out that there was a, a total of $25,000 that my husband had accrued in debt that I didn't know about. This means using the proper... Donald had recently left teaching to start a full-time voiceover business. Abby agreed to put her social work salary towards the bills, even though she wanted to be at home more with her daughter. Her daughter's getting older, and so I don't want to be missing out on things with her because I'm working so much. Donald ended up going into debt because he wanted to get the business off the ground as fast as possible. My mindset was, okay, if I can just get everything that I need, then I'll be able to arrive in that place that'll make me feel like, okay, like, I'm good now. It wasn't until much later that I <laughs> really felt the gravity of the financial infidelity. He'd always had the mentality that borrowing money to succeed was normal. In fact, when the couple married, they were $160,000 in the hole, and most of the debt was Donald's. I mean, it's, it's a part of, of living in our society, right? We, we have access to these financial instruments. Initially, I was so discouraged because I felt like all that we had done did he not learn anything from it? Did he not learn anything from paying off six figures, That how much hard work that that takes? And I certainly was under the impression we were never going back. I don't, I don't think on a soul level like that I really got it. It, did, it didn't click how significant it was because there were still places in my life that I was unsatisfied. Only after Donald's secret debt was exposed did he want to look at what kept driving him into debt. For me, I began to see like, wow, there's something off. It, it really was a, a, a tool that, that the Lord used um, in my life to bring me back to Him. And I began to pray and ask God to help me to see the error of my ways correctly. The root of that was, I do not want to fail. I'm afraid, and so I'm charging up and I'm over leveraging like on credit, as opposed to being okay with the pain of having to move slower it kind of gives you a, a perceived way of uh, getting what you need now. He also found that even though he and Abby had been tithing throughout their marriage, sometimes for him it was more an obligation than anything else. And putting God first in his finances wasn't always his priority. There was a point where when Donald was paying off the last 4000 of that 25000 I asked him one day, I was like, are you tithing the money that you're getting? He's like, no, you know, I'm just trying to put it all towards the debt. I believe that if I held on to my tithe, that it would be what I needed to take care of what I had to take care of. But it's the exact opposite. God's like, hey, will you have enough faith and trust that everything that I give you is mine? Whenever you let go of, of what's in your hands as a worship unto me, it actually blesses the rest of it. Moving forward, Donald has been fully committed to trusting God with his money. The couple paid off their second round of debt and gave without reservations. Going from the religiosity of it and where I stand now, where it's like it's a freely giving and there's a joy to it, it's a night and day difference. It has been an incredible, I would say the key to business success. Donald has since seen his income triple what he made as a teacher, and Abby has been able to leave her job to be a stay-at-home mom. I can definitely say that by tithing and by giving of, of offerings, sometimes giving above and beyond, that there's clients and there's business opportunities that I'm like, okay, I, I didn't audition for that. The Gadsons encourage others who want to be free from the cycle of debt to examine where God is in the midst of the equation and give. There's nothing like touching your money, that's gonna help you know where your heart is at on something. We tithe because we recognize 
He gets the first because he is the one who has kept us. He is the one who has sustained us. It really is a way for you to experience the fullness of what it means to be um, a child of the king, a, a very generous king at that. Realize that God is very generous. He wants to be generous, but what is he looking for? He's looking for your heart. And Jesus says it clearly, uh, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Here's a scripture for you. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Never think that it was your own strength and energy that made you wealthy. Always remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to become rich. That power he wants to give you. He wants his children blessed. He wants them successful. He wants them out of poverty, out of debt. He wants all of these things for, for you. You don't have to convince him of it. He wants. What he's looking for is how are you going to apply it? Where is your heart? I call it the 80-10-10 rule. If you live life this way, this isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. This is if you do this consistently over time, you will have success. Number one thing, put God first. Tithe when you put the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. All these other things will be added unto you. The second thing, do this off the top too. Pay yourself. Save 10% of your income. If you do that faithfully, you do that monthly, over time you will accumulate. And in that accumulation, you'll have enough money to make investments. You can buy real estate. You can get into mutual funds, exchange-traded funds. You'll have the ability to invest with that 10%. And this is the key for Donald, live within your income. Live within that 80% of your income, have that be the expenses. Please avoid all commercial debt, credit card debt, that kind of stuff, the, the consumer debt, if you will. Uh, having a home mortgage is a good thing. Uh, investing in your business is a good thing. But live within that 80%. If you do these things, you'll have success. If you want to start 2022 by saying, I want to put God first, I want to tithe, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is that? It's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. We have other club levels for you. 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. Whatever level, call us now. 1-800-700-7000. Our way of saying thank you for joining the 700 Club is to send you a copy of my father's latest book. It's called The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, and it reveals the ways that the Spirit of God can bless you. Ed Robertson's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. The Holy Spirit is infinite. If He pours out blessings on you, He can also pour out blessings on me. There are sufficient resources at the disposal of an infinite God to reward each one of us with bountiful blessings. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. 700 Club partners are helping strangers in places like this remote village in Peru. During the dry seasons, the people there once walked four hours a day at, in the morning, beginning at four in the morning, and the only source of water that they could find was a dirty pond that was being used by animals. Evangelina and her family live in the mountains of Peru, more than 13,000 feet above sea level. Their greatest need is for water, for drinking, bathing, and for their animals. During the days, I graze the sheep, and I also plant potatoes and oats. During the rainy season, Evangelina collects water in any available containers as it runs off the roof of their tiny house. They also dig holes, or mud cisterns, to collect water in the ground. Seven-year-old Nalita says it's hard because sometimes they have to drink the same water as the animals. I drink warm water. It is not clean. It is dirty and smell. The color is like cocoa. Evangelina says she tries to clean the water by running it through a cloth and letting it settle. 
but the water is still dangerous and filled with bacteria. There were times when her daughter got sick from drinking it. I was very worried and thought that maybe my daughter would die. During winter is the most difficult time for the family. The rain stops and the conditions are desert-like. They set out at four in the morning with their donkey and walk up to four hours round trip to get water from another pond. The water in that pond is not good either. It smells bad. We must use it for making hot drinks and soups, but it smells like cow manure. We don't know where there is any other water. When Operation Blessing learned about their need, our engineer found an underground spring. We built a three-stage process at the source to purify and transport water to this 1,300-gallon underground tank in the community. From there, water is delivered by pipe to all 17 households. According to Evangelina, everyone now has fresh, clean water to drink. The water is sweet. It's also great for making coffee and soups. It does not cause stomach problems either. Because I have clean water, I am happy. Thank you very much, Operation Blessing. Thank you, Operation Blessing. I'm happy to have this water. Can you imagine walking four hours one way to get water that looks like that water looked? I mean, water that smells like cow manure and you have to drink it because it's all you've got. 700 Club members, you are making this kind of a difference in the lives of thousands of people all the time. And we want to say thank you. You know, it's not just these people in Peru. It's around the world. They don't have the kind of water that we have here in the United States. And for many of us here in the United States, with good water, we filter that. You can make a difference in the lives of people whose lives are really at risk because of the kind of water they're drinking, along with so many other things. Emergency surgeries, op opportunities to, to just literally revitalize communities and families. There's so much going on, and always with the gospel of Jesus Christ going with that. Join the 700 Club if you haven't done it already. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month. You really can make a difference, especially when we all join together. There Here's our number, it's toll free, 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I want to join. When you do, we want to say thank you to you by sending Pat's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. This is a remarkable book, recounting all of the ways that the Holy Spirit worked in Pat's life over 60 years of broadcasting and sharing the gospel. We want you to have this. We think it'll be a great blessing to you. So will you call now? Just say, I want to join the 700 Club, and will you do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work. You don't have to remember anything, but it does save some additional costs that we can put even more into the lives of people like Evangelina and her community. So call Call now, and if you're already a 700 Club member, go up to 700 Club Gold, will you? That's a gift of $40 a month. Some of you who are Gold Club members, consider the 1,000 Club at $84 a month or the 2,500 Club at $209 a month. We even have founders who join us at 417 a month. That works out to $5,000 a year. When we all come collectively together, we can change the world with the love of Jesus Christ and in very practical ways. Be a part of that. Gordon? In Irving, Texas, nearly all the pantries that help feed the community over the last two years have closed down. Still, there are hundreds of people that need groceries and supplies. Well, thanks to Operation Blessing and thanks to you, one pantry is able to keep its doors open and provide that much needed help. While some parts of the country are getting back to normal, many families still rely on their local food bank. In Irving, Texas, Operation Blessing partner Agape Connect is doing all they can to help families cope with the pandemic. A lot of people doing COVID are really still struggling. When COVID hit my job, I had lost my job as well, but Operation Blessing helped me during my challenging times during COVID just by having the necessary things that I needed. Executive Director Harrison Hernandez. So our average is about two, 300 vehicles per distribution. So we might end up seeing anywhere from 400 to 600 plus uh, individuals come through our line. Families that are still hurting financially, families that are still being impacted because of 
what COVID has done to us. I'm married, I got two kids. I've been in that position before. I um, choose to either feed my family or pay my bills. Thanks to Operation Blessing Partners, families are getting the help they need to feed their children. At many distribution sites, people drive through and have food placed directly into their cars. While all the pantries shut down, mostly in Irving, our church stayed open because we still had resources that we could provide to our community. And we wouldn't be able to serve Agape, wouldn't be able to be where it is today without the help and the support of folks at Operation Blessing. Thank you, Operation Blessing, for being there, providing me and my family some food, especially the kids. They do greatly appreciate it. We thank you for everything. If you're a member of the 700 Club, that thank you goes all the way from Irving, Texas to you. Because of you, we're able to do these things. A portion of every gift to the 700 Club goes into the work of Operation Blessing to feed people right here in America. And I'm not just talking a little bit. We're talking millions of pounds of food every year going to the needy right here at home. If you want to see the gospel preached around the world, join the 700 Club. A portion of every gift goes into CBN International as well. Uh, you're part of all of the disaster relief teams. You're part of all that we do when you join with us. So if that's you, if you want to be a member, call us, 1-800-700-7000. If you are a member, consider increasing. Consider going to 700 Club Gold, $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year. We have 2,500 Club at 2,500 a year. Founder is $5,000 or more. At whatever level, do it now, 1-800-700-7000. And when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving with the bank doing all the work. And we can send as our gift to you, Power for Life, monthly teaching CDs. 700 Club partners will also receive a, power, a copy of The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. This brand new book from my father explores the third member of the Holy Trinity. And it reveals how you can have God's Spirit guide you throughout your life. In Pat Robertson's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, discover the life that is available to you. This I can say with certainty. If a believer sincerely cries out to the Holy Spirit for guidance and direction, the Holy Spirit will move heaven and earth to keep his servant from being misled. He will bring us direct guidance and the answers we need for each step of our lives. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. As I wrote this book, I felt that I was personally on the edge of something so enormously wonderful. It should be made available to everyone who has been filled with the spirit of the living God. CBN presents The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, a new book by Pat Robertson. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible to us. In this powerful book, Pat illuminates the work of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible and reveals how the Spirit is working in believers today. I marvel at the strength God gives His people when we realize that the Spirit of God will go like a mighty warrior before us and that none of our enemies can stand against us. Get Pat's book and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Call now or go to CBN.com. Jeff West survived an IED attack while serving in Iraq. His physical injuries led him to a hardcore pain pill addiction. Still, it was his invisible wounds that nearly killed him long after he left the war zone. It was like I did die over there. And I was just living in this shell, empty with no emotions, no feelings. And it was just oh, so much pain that I couldn't bear it. While serving in the Iraq war, Jeff West was physically and emotionally broken. He blamed God for the atrocities he witnessed during the war. After seeing families and children, the moms, the dads, and just people being killed and losing my you know, fellow Marines over there, I just couldn't believe that you know, he, was, he was allowing this type of stuff to go on. 
Like, I thought I was here doing good work. Like, you know, I'm protecting, I'm fighting for my country so that people can live, but, but yet God is allowing all this to happen. When he was a boy, Jeff went to church with his parents and was taught that God was loving and good. But seeing the horrors of war up close threw him into a deep depression. He hated himself and God. I started to blame God for everything that was going wrong in my life, you know. I had de developed a hatred that, you know, like, how can you allow this stuff to go on? And I'm, I did something for my country. I thought I was doing something good, and here I am, depressed. He survived an IED attack on his Humvee that resulted in a serious back injury and led to an addiction to pain medication. I had back problems. I had traumatic brain injury, and nothing regular over-the-counter medicine wouldn't help. And so I would use other methods of getting, you know, narcotics and you know, uh, pain prescription pills and Xanax and stuff for anxiety. After he returned to the States, Jeff married and had a son. But the chaos in his mind brought destruction to every area of his life. I, I had become unfaithful. Uh, to my wife, and again, that just further strengthened that capacity to, to hate myself even more. But mentally, just telling myself, like, you know, you're better off dead. You know, like, what are you doing? You're not being an active father. You know, you're doing all these terrible, terrible things. Something was missing inside of me. Then, when he learned his mother died by drug overdose, Jeff decided he would take his own life. I took 15 Xanaxes and about 38 uh, Oxys. The next thing I remember was I was in my car and there was a police officer like looking at me and he was shining a light in my eye. And then the next thing I remember is I woke up in jail. While there, his wife filed a restraining order against him and later divorced him. Jeff was desperate for hope. Then a fellow inmate shared a Bible verse. Somebody came up, yep, yeah, and then they sat down and they shared, you know, Romans 12, 2. You know, do not be conformed by the world, but by the renewal of your mind. And then and only then will you be able to find peace. Jeff knew he had no one else to turn to but God. I was completely and utterly destroyed. That was my uh, bottomless bottom. You know, that was the lowest of my low. So I prayed, I, I sat there and I got down and you know, I prayed to God and I said, if you will deliver me, you know, I will change my ways. I will go into rehab. I will do whatever it takes for me to get better and, you know, and, and live a Christ-centered life. Then I just felt this wave come over me and it, it knocked me to my, to my knees and I, I just, I surrendered. There was a flicker of light, you know, inside of me after that prayer. And, he entered a rehab program and got clean and sober. My life is much more different than it was three years ago. You know, I work in a field that I am so passionate about. I'm engaged to a beautiful woman, and, and we feed the homeless every month. And, you know, my life has become more positive. You know, I feel like I live a more purpose-filled life now. Jeff is helping veterans dealing with addiction and suicide. 22 veterans a day commit suicide. And purpose in my life has become to, you know, be that beacon of hope. He also works with his local church and volunteers with other recovery programs. God doesn't use the perfect people to help make changes in the world. He uses people like me that's been broken and has come back and being able to be a part of something greater that wouldn't be possible unless God would have not picked me up off that floor or I hadn't surrendered. So my life has drastically become a million times better. And I wouldn't, you know, want anything else. You can have that same thing. You can understand so clearly God wants to use you. You may think you're broken. You may think you're worthless. You may think you've gone too far. But here's the great answer for you. This saying is true and worthy of all acceptance. This is what the Bible says. The, I'm quoting the Apostle Paul. This saying is true and worthy of all acceptance. 
Jesus Christ came to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Now, here's Paul. He used to be known as Saul. And Saul, what he did was he zealously guarded the Torah regulations, and he went and he imprisoned Christians. He took men and women and he put them in chains and dragged them off to jail, all because of what they believed. Now, God reached him and changed him and renewed his mind. And he went from, I was an injurious man. I used to celebrate and, and think I was doing God some favor by putting people in jail. He says, I've changed. Now I understand his love. Now I understand his forgiveness. Now I want to be a vessel for him. When you look at Jeff's life, he, he went as a Marine. He was doing his duty. And then he saw some things that people shouldn't see. And when you, when you see those things, it injures your brain. It's not some disorder. It just comes because you've seen things that your brain just can't pop process. And so he comes back with that. He comes back with injuries. He comes back with pain. He gets involved in pills, and he takes some very wrong decisions. And at the end of it, he wants to end it all. And from that place, he cries out to God. And God hears him and answers him and changes him. You can have that same change. He is willing to change your mind, your innermost being, your gut reaction to things. He wants to give you purpose. He wants to give you life. He wants to give you life abundantly. He wants to set you in a family. He wants to do all of these things for you. Why? Because he loves you. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. You don't have to clean up first. You don't have to make a bargain. You just have to say yes. Here I am. Can you use me? Can you take me? Can you change me? If you pray that with all of your heart, that's what Jeff did prayed it with all of his heart, and he got all in, you'll get that same answer. If you want to do this, bow your head with me. Let's pray a very simple prayer, and Jesus will do all the rest. Pray with me. Jesus, say his name, say it out loud. Jesus, I hear you came for sinners, and that means me. Come into my heart. Make me new. Renew my mind, and Jesus, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to let somebody know. We've got a free packet for you. It's called A New Day, and there's a wonderful teaching how you live the Christian life. It's all free. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. 1-800-700-7000.